What's going on everyone? In this video, I want to talk about testing encrypted services. So that's testing services for their protocols, their cipher suites, their certificates and all that good stuff. So encryption is obviously a big part of computing to make sure that people who shouldn't see data can't see data that's traveling over a network. And it also ensures that data going from point A to point B stays intact. So I'm talking about integrity there. So I use two tools to do this and that's SSL scan and test SSL. They're both really good tools and I use them together to make sure I don't get false positives on things. And I'm just gonna go through these tools now and show you how I use them and the process to test TLS encryption um, in a kind of ever evolving computing world. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all the different floors of different protocols and different ciphers because as I say, they do change a lot. I'm just gonna show you my process of kind of how to stay up to date with the different ciphers and the different vulnerabilities that are found. So first of all, SSL scan. This is how it's laid out. It takes in your host. So I'm testing a web application here and obviously this could be a database or another service, but this is what I'm doing. That then spits out all the different protocols that are enabled. It shows you the different ciphers that are enabled on those protocols. So it essentially just tries to connect with the different protocol and cipher combinations and shows you all of the ones that the server supports. And it shows you the SSL certificate as well. Test SSL does basically the same thing. Uh, it shows you the different protocols. It shows you all of the different cipher categories that it's testing for. So that's all of the bad ones as well as the good ones and it shows you all the different vulnerabilities that it's testing for. Again, there's quite a few and they are found all the time. And then it gives you a list, again, like the last tool did, of all the different ciphers that are available, yet this gives the OpenSSL name as well as the RFC name. So these are actually the same cipher, just called different things depending on who you're talking to. So this is my process for testing SSL TLS. These days, SSL version two and three, they should be disabled. They're flawed. If they're enabled, it's likely the data is gonna be stolen um, if an attacker is really good uh, and knowledgeable. And that's kind of the same with TLS 1.0 as well. You know, if you're getting audited by someone and you have these enabled, you're probably gonna fail that audit. It will come up as a high risk or something along those lines. These days, you really only want to be using TLS 1.2 and above because these are the strongest. Uh, TLS 1.1, you will still find enabled uh, quite a lot of places as of December 2021, but that's being depreciated. So I would recommend uh, that is disabled, as I say, just have these ones enabled from kind of now on. So that's protocols. In terms of ciphers, there's so many different configurations uh, that make something either strong or weak that it's kind of hard to test these. And what I would recommend doing is running this, these tools and putting them into a website uh, which I'm gonna show you now. So let's just take uh, one of the weak ones, which is uh, DES CBC SHA. And what this is known as is a CBC3 cipher, which means it's vulnerable or potentially vulnerable to the Suite 32 attack. So if you pop that cipher name into the Cypher Suite website here, you'll show, it'll show you that this is weak and it'll show you that this is the reason it's weak. I'm not gonna go into why these are weak, but these are the flaws. Going back to here, the issue with using SSL scan over test SSL is the naming convention. It's with the open SSL names, it's kind of hard sometimes to see what it's using, uh, what the whole cipher makeup is. Sometimes it's easy, you can see here it's CBC3, but in others it's, it's less easy to see. So I would recommend actually using test SSL for this and looking at the RFC names and just copy and pasting this into the website instead. So the one we just looked at here, the CBC3, is this one here. So it's actually using three DES and CBC here, and that's why it's a CBC3 cipher. Um, and these are the kind of things you'll pick up as you do this more and more. As I say, you don't really need to know this yet. If you just plug it into the website, it will show you the issues and that's what you can report on. But the way I would go about this is I would just take each individual cipher here and put that into this website. And then you can see whether it's secure or not because this website obviously keeps up to date. So you can see this is a uh, ECDHE um, 
protocol uh, cipher uh, and this is one of the secure ones because it's using this with the AEAD encryption algorithm and that's kind of the most secure you can get these days. So just to go over this, these are the insecure encryption algorithms. So when you're looking at this list, you don't want to see triple DES, you don't want to see Camilla, you don't want to say see AES on its own, you want to see AES GCM because they are the most secure encryption algorithms for TLS encryption right now. As for the key exchange, you don't want to see RSA. You don't want to see DH, which is Diffel Hyman, with a key less than 1024, and that's why that's in orange. What you want to see is the ECDH key exchange with 256. So when you see ECDH 256 with the AES GCM, that is the most the strongest encryption cipher suite you can have right now. Anything else like um, DH with ACM, AS, GCM, that is slightly weak because it's using Diffelheimer with a weak key. So as I say, what I'd recommend is just simply taking this, popping it into the website, seeing whether it comes up as secure or not, the reasons why things are insecure, and then you can pop that into your report and leave the client with a list of all of their insecure um, TLS protocols and their ciphers, and then they can try and change their web server or whatever service they're using to disable those weak ciphers and protocols, and they'll be left with just the best ones. And if obviously sometimes the best ones might not be enabled, so you can see here, this is the best one right now. So you wanna kind of follow suit here. Um, Cyber Suite's really good as well because it does show you the most secure ones. So if you go back to the website and go to the Cyber Suites page, you can go security, you can go secure, and these are all of the secure ciphers that should be used. You can also see the recommended ones. So the recommended ones are good because not only are they deemed secure enough to be used, but they are good for kind of general use. So with old browsers, sometimes Cyber Suites aren't supported, but these ones have been proved to be supported and still be secure enough to be used. So that's kind of security versus usability. And these are probably the ones that clients are gonna be most interested in. So that's kind of my theory behind testing TLS um, services. Uh, I hope you learned something there and uh, thanks for watching guys. Give us a like and a subscribe and I appreciate it.